So we've got seven years of funding. So we're, we're one year through um, that investment. There are lots of hubs around the UK um, and we are essentially looking at how we can develop net zero manufacturing um, across any industry. So we are looking at cellular agriculture, um, not just food, but, but consumables. And our vision um, is to is for a just transition to environmentally, economically and socially sustainable food systems actually and beyond. Now, that's a really, really big task. And obviously, we can't do that on our own. So um, as part of the reason why we're here and why we're building our, our wider networks, but also that the mission is very much around the integration of transdisciplinary responsible approaches for novel cellular agriculture tools and technologies that we can integrate with the current food systems. So um, the the, the hub really is about net zero. It's not just about carbon, and, and really this is why we've got here um, the uh, the planetary boundaries, because we need to be able to produce food and, and consumables within planetary boundaries, which we're not currently doing, um, and it's how we can address those really, really huge challenges. Um, so in terms of what Karma is doing, I, I framed this using the triple bottom line um, framework, uh, we, myself, Neil Stevens and two of our colleagues um, published a paper on this, and I will say right up front that it's an imperfect framework, but it is one that gives a frame to what we're aiming to do. And perhaps in itself is a, um, a, a research area. How do we really look at what is what does success mean for our industry? So if we take the outer circle, which is environment, um, in terms of the work that we're doing in Karma, we have Work Package 4, which is looking at sustainable supply chain and life cycle. Um, and it's out of circle because everything, at least at the moment, everyone is living on, on planet Earth. Uh, the second circle is about people and the social aspects. And we've got two areas here, understanding and influencing social issues in the wider public and then the public and policy engagement, so stakeholders, so people who, who literally have a, have a stake um, in this industry. And then the central one is the economy. Um, and here we look at the technical uh, work packages for Karma. So um, whether we're, so our focus is around two underpinning like, manufacturing technologies, so precision fermentation, and at the moment we are um, focusing on yeast for um, oil for palm oil and tissue engineering and at the moment we're focusing on cultivated meats and together um, they are work package one so upstream processing is work package one we have work package two which is looking at separation purification and further um, development of downstream processing so this is purification of the products themselves but also how do we utilize waste either within um, our industry or otherwise and, and also water recycling. Um, and then we have feedstocks, which is work package three. So looking at cell sourcing, media sourcing and scaffolds as well. And the, um, the, I guess the, the, the kind of the really cool, exciting bit that we're looking at is how can we achieve, um, a circular bioeconomy from within cellular agriculture systems? So tissue engineering bioreactors produce waste that could be used as feed for precision fermentation and precision fermentation produces waste that could be used as feed for tissue engineering. That can actually expand, expand across a whole range of cellular agriculture, um, uh, manufacturing different microorganisms and how, how can we achieve those, um, that, that net zero and that circular bioeconomy. Um, so you're going to hear from um, three of our work packages. So I'm going to just touch on what the other three are doing. Um, so work package two at the moment are um, really focused on how we can get either the the, um, the yeast products or the cultivated meat products purified um, in a way that is efficient from the systems, but then also how to further purify oil. I believe that's work on emulsions. So looking at Hannah. Yep. So looking at um, emuls emulsion purification, but then also wastewater. Um, so 
we all know that cell culture medias have essentially they're dilute solutions. They have a lot of water and a lot of salt, which could be recycled. And water is under pressure. Um, so that's going to also be a really key aspect, aspect that we're looking at. Um, so feedstocks, um, that work package is work package three. It starts in, um, in 2025. But there's always already a lot of active work going on in Aberystwyth that, um, that Ruth is, is heading up and some work at Bath as well. So looking at agricultural um, sources, either, either waste or crops in terms of how we can have plant based and uh, more environmentally friendly media formulations. But in terms of cultivated meat and cell sourcing, um, looking at whether different animals, different breeds of an animal and different locations on an animal can provide uh, better cells for, um, for development and for, for culture. Um, and then work package four, um, again, say it has, has kicked off. And the, the aim for, for work package four really is to provide um, the industry with a, a really solid understanding of, of what is a robust supply chain for us and how we can work with that and achieve it. And also how we can make environmentally sound decisions on the technologies that we're developing, whether that's the manufacturing technologies or the, or the feedstocks, so that um, we can achieve all three um, of these aspects together. So um, looking at a little bit of, um, uh, I suppose, look at a slightly different structure of Karma, those six work packages are split between two grand challenges. Um, grand challenge one, um, looking at value chain integration, and Grand Challenge 2 with underpinning technologies. And what we learn from the work packages involved in Grand Challenge 1 would inform um, the, some of the decisions that we're making from a technology development perspective. Um, I will also mention um, the importance um, to the hub um, in terms of EDI, sustainability and training and development. So these are inherent to what we do. Um, and there are various ways that these um, are, are coming into play. Um, so we have, um, there'll be, as you can imagine, there'll be surveys and check-ins with people involved directly in Karma. Um, but also we have to do due diligence on, on people who are going to be involved and, and some EDI and sustainability questions will come into that due diligence. Um, and looking at training opportunities around EDI as well. And very much what we're interested in doing is helping um, not just members of Karma, but people outside of Karma to develop the skills that we need for our industry. Doing that alongside other cent centres and organisations, so NAPIC and um, the Bezos um, Centre at Imperial, we are looking at how we can share resources in terms of training and development for the, for the industry. So a very exciting space that will start this afternoon. And sustainability, it's all very well working towards sustainable technologies, but what what happens during these seven years and, and whatever in the research itself is important that we are being as sustainable as we can be. So it's not just an end, it's a means to an end as well. Um, and that is very much part of, um, of how we are operating. So um, that's kind of where we um, kind of where we are, where we started. Um, looking at, say, the current um, six work packages. But from this coming year, just to want to say, show you before I go on to say who's currently involved, is to, um, to give you some ideas of how you can get involved. And that really starts the day and, and the networking opportunities. So we have um, some money to look at discipline hopping, whether that's between academic institutions or academic um, stakeholders, which can be industry policy or, or otherwise. Um, looking at professional, personal and professional development, which I've just mentioned, with associated projects, um, but actually there could be opportunities with, um, within companies or, or other universities that we could um, bring in here. Uh, so I think something that will be of great interest is that we are about to launch our um, pump priming course. Um, hopefully in the next few months, and this will allow for us to bring, start to bring in people outside of the founding team of Karma to, um, to become involved. We've got, I say, some good lumps of money for that, and the goal of that is that we will bring in um, the first new spokes, so academic spokes within the, um, of, from, for year three. 
Could also be engagement activities that you can get involved in immediately with work packages and also the various um, forums that we have um, going on. So the stakeholder forum, for example, and potential. I know there are some international um, uh, colleagues in the room. So looking at international um, exchanges with with researchers from uh, from Karma. So the current team of um, hubs um, of Hub and Spokes, so Bath is the hub and the current spokes are UCL, Aberystwyth, Bristol, Birmingham and Royal Ag. And so we're aiming to build um, up the, the spoke network to between three to six more um, spokes as we go forwards. Uh, and just to say, current associated companies and our advisory board, as the logo's there to show you who's involved, we're very much hoping to um, expand on the um, associated companies um, and say a big thank you to the advisory board. We had a, a good meeting yesterday, which is already feeding into what we're looking at um, doing in the, um, in the coming years. And to put that in slightly different context and just to show global. So, yes, this is an EPSRC project funded um, for, um, for UK universities. Um, however, it's very much a um, global reach. So we have um, a number of associated projects. Um, I've mentioned um, NAPIC and Vesos, but also Tucker in the States, um, Feast um, in Portugal. And Carlos is here for that for that very reason. Um, Biofutures uh, based in France and Cell Food based in Denmark. We have members, not surprisingly, um, on a range of advisory boards. Um, and our advisory board is, is, has also international reach. So food security and climate change um, are global issues. And we're very much um, we want to be very much part of that global solution.